Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Coaching While Black. My name is Chris Reed. I'm your host, along with my co-host, Anthony Andino. Hey, everybody. Armand Richards. Happy to be here. In today's episode, we are joined with our guest, Natalie White, Vice President of uh, Social Impact with the Los Angeles Sparks, for a conversation about women in sports. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Chris. No, thank you for coming out. I know we've been in conversation for a while just about how we can work together. And I didn't really envision the podcast. I thought some other stuff was coming, but really grateful that you're here today. Uh, We just want to have a chat about your background, who you are, but also the impact that you have on women's sports, especially in Los Angeles and where you see things going. So if you could just tell us just a bit about your background in sports and how you came to be where you are now. All right, I can do that. So Natalie White, as Chris mentioned, vice president of the Los Angeles Sparks. Um, I am, I've been in sports business for over 25 years. All right. Um, so I grew up in a small town in Georgia, Fort Valley, Georgia, which is an hour, 30 minutes south of Atlanta. Um, I am a Florida a and grad. Hey. Um, I am a Rattler, bleed orange hey, and green. Hey, let's go. And uh, my passion is youth and sports. I'm inspiring youth and really, really um, have an opportunity to um, share my career journey, being from a small town, dreaming big, and the opportunity that 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 lies. But um, so played basketball at, at FAMU as well. Okay. Um, so okay. had an unbelievable career there. So if you ever go to Tallahassee, you go inside the the gym, you'll see my jersey that's retired Ooh, I'm in the Hall of Fame there. Your jersey number? Yeah. Jersey number ten in in, in ten in uh in, in college and number three in high school, both okay. retired. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. All right. So I just, um, my journey, um, when I was five years old, um, I knew I wanted to play basketball. And well, I started playing basketball at five years old. And then by the time I got to middle school, I knew I wanted to go to college. Mm-hmm. And so all my high school was focused on um, my grades and playing basketball. So I missed out a lot of hanging out, going to the mall, doing all those things. And in the summer, I stayed in, in basketball camps because I told my parents, if you bought me the latest Nike shoes coming out, I promise <laughs> you that you would not have to pay for me to go to school and wow. um i held on i held on to my part of the deal and i tell you it's been um basketball when i picked up that ball i'd never imagined it would have taken me this far wow. but it has been unbelievable for me that's powerful you're in the right place right we are all about uh supporting youth and sport mm-hmm. and doing it the right way and i wish i had your thought process around the sneakers i have a sneaker issue but i never like <laughs> connected the dots of, like if you hook me up now right. i won't you know so that's mm-hmm. really cool mm-hmm. um but you're working with the sparks now could you tell mm-hmm. us a little bit more about your role in la and what you're doing you in the big city now you're doing big things so please tell the folks what's going okay. on so going into my seventh season um, with the sparks so i've held numerous roles in, including interim um, president and in, in what in two 2021, um, but currently I am the vice president of uh, community relations and social impact. So my role is to foster everything, all things community, and running our youth basketball camps and clinics. So building the strategy around our reach and and brand awareness um, in the community. Um, so we're not just in LA. So we we venture out to the valley. We're out in Inland Empire. Um, you know, we're in the we're in the in the South Bay. So we're all over. We're all over. So we have pretty much five pillars that we operate around. So we have our health and wellness, um, women and girls empowerment, um, social justice, our youth basketball platform. And then we dive in a little bit into the military women veterans. Oh, wow. Um, really, because wow, pretty much a couple years ago, well, actually when I first joined the Sparks in 2018, um, we worked with the Department of Mental Health around what can we do to help um, women's veterans, you know, get acclimated back into society and wanting to come out. And we find the we found the parallel between when our players, the WNBA athletes go overseas oh. and then them coming back, you know, that translation of just getting acclimated, yeah. you know, in a, in a you know new country and, and what it takes being away from family, you know, that adjustment that it takes. So we started a campaign called Spark the True You and it was around supporting women veterans and we really help them, you know, get out and not being afraid to get back out in the community to interact with people. How do you see sort of the the role of Sparks on youth sports and where that needs to change maybe? Because I know personally we're all here because we see youth sports as a really toxic environment, especially for young women. How can we change that? And how can we as men be allies for that change? Well, the, well, the first thing in regards to, to youth and especially girls in sport, um, we're having the issue of young girls leaving the game at yeah. the eighth grade. And we've we've 
we've been on, you know, a different mission and really meeting them where they are, asking these young girls, why did you stop playing? Mm -hmm. And some of the answers are obvious, and some of them are shocking and surprising as well. Okay. So it, it's, it's great that you brought up, you know, how can men be more allies? Mm -hmm. And I've been coached by male and female. So the difference is, is actually it's the person. To me, it's not about the gender. Mm -hmm. It's the person and how you're communicating with that youth, um, not being intimidating, you know, being more of a mentor, um, constructive feedback, doing what you say you're going to do. The consistency mm -hmm. yeah, 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 is yeah. what is what matters. And also it's just, you know, understanding that girls can do what boys do. It goes back when I was growing up. Um, I played with boys a lot. Um, naturally, it's just faster, stronger. So it was one of those things where if you knew you could compete in that space, you know, you would be fine mm -hmm. when you got with your age yeah. group because I always played up. And it's, it's about, you know, just really making it fun. Making yeah. it fun. You you can't take the fun out of it. When you take the fun out of it, then the kids become less interested. They're going to do it because girls mature faster than yep. boys. Oh, we know. Um, we know the science. <laughs> know. So mature the science. faster than boys. Yeah. And just how they comprehend, how they comprehend is, is a little different. So um, I think that a lot of times when males are coaching females, sometimes it's by default. You know, sometimes like, okay, this is what's available now, but I really want to coach boys. Uh, so the mentality going yeah, in has to be that yeah. I'm coaching you because I want to coach you, be not because it's a stepping stone or it's just an opportunity. opportunity. Right. Yeah. And kids pick up on that. Oh, for sure. Real, kids, you, they're real. very, very 100%. smart. So it's, you can't say that you're going to be there and then be absent. Yeah. I mean, there's so, no creature more tuned into belonging than a kid. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Right. And right. they'll know when you're like... They know the minute, right. the minute you go faking, they, they know what it is. And, and yeah. then it's like a non-conversation. We just all mm -hmm. don't like you now. Right. So you've not only had a professional, like uh, not a professional, but a major career on the court, but now you're doing major things off the court. In this span of 25 plus years of basketball, was there ever a woman that was in the sports world, whether an athlete or just in the industry that inspired you or that you looked up to or just it made made you feel like I can attain this? Was there anybody that really did that for you? Well, this will take me back to um, graduate school when I was at FAM. I got my master's in sports management, okay. and my graduate internship actually was an introduction to what would become a 10-year uh, career at Nike Incorporated. Um, but Felicia Hall Allen, um, she was my first boss, mm -hmm. quote unquote, at Nike um, through this um, graduate internship, which happened to be with the WNBA in Phoenix. So it's kind of like how things came full circle. But um, she was the first person that gave an opportunity to someone from an HBCU mm. to ha to obtain an internship, which is called a, which was called the Nike Adrenaline Internship. And basically, your my job was to uh, create awareness for the league. And this was in 1999. Wow. And as you know, the yeah. league was formed in 1996, yeah. 97. So 1999, I and mean, this is when Cheryl Miller yeah. was there in Phoenix at the time. Um, so my job was to be out in the community, working with the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCAs, getting them excited about mm -hmm. the brand, getting them excited mm -hmm. about, you know, the, 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 how we were wanting to expose the young girls um, to meet these phenomenal athletes, to develop that mentorship and that relationship with them. And Felicia Hall Allen gave me that opportunity. Amazing. And I took that and, you know, immediately after the internship, you know, I was offer, offered a full-time position at Nike. And so I've traveled. I've been in Pittsburgh, in Oregon. Actually, I was in L.A. with Nike before I transitioned on to the WNBA. But Felicia Hall Allen is one that, um, first of all, seeing someone that looks like me yeah, and yeah. In, in her position of power, she became, after she left Nike, she became the president of the Charlotte Sting. Oh, um, they, oh, wow. I'm, I'm testing your history now, oh, the yeah, WNBA. The <laughs> when the yeah, Charlotte Sting, yeah. um, she was the president there, but she was one that now she helps young black coaches um, get opportunities wow. in the field. Wow. So um, she's an amazing person. I um, really, really speaks highly of using your voice and knowing your worth and value. So she really, really honed in on that because, you know, oftentimes people see things in you that mm -hmm. sometimes you don't see in yourself. For sure. And she was one that really kind of brought it out. That's so. amazing. And I, I, I want to hark on something, you know, 
having representation, like right. you said, somebody that looked like you. I think especially for young women of color, having somebody who looks like you, who has a similar background to you or who has been through the place that you've been through, mm -hmm. it makes it that much more attainable. It makes things that much more reasonable as opposed to like a dream. It's actually something I can do. Mm -hmm. And not only can I do that, I'm going to do the next thing right. and the next thing and the next thing. And right. so... Um, it's phenomenal to hear about your background and your career. Um, we were talking about you know, youth sports and, and young women and all mm -hmm. that the Sparks are doing, but as, a, as an employee of the Women's League, as an employee of the W, where do you see the W going in the next 5, 10, 20 years? I know the sport is growing. I know mm -hmm. that popularity is growing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and men may not say it, but men do. Basketball heads like me and Anthony, we will For watch. Sure. The W. Uh, I'm a big Sabrina fan, so okay. we will watch. But also, like, with college ball, with Juju and everything she's mm -hmm. doing at USC right Absolutely. now, like, we will watch. So where do you see the league going? Where do you see <coughs> women's basketball going in the next 5, 10, 20 years? Well, I see the WNBA really continuing to grow, um, you know, just really piggyback off, in, off of the collegiate experience mm -hmm. and the exposure that the college game, is bringing now mm -hmm. um, with what my good friend, what Dawn Staley yeah. is doing in South Carolina. Um, everybody is 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 watching Caitlin, and uh, oh, I want to see what she's gonna do as she's coming out and all that. But um, I, I really feel that it will continue to grow and expand. Mm -hmm. um, so what next year it should be, you know, two teams, you know, joining the league. Awesome. You know, so you know it, it's it's. It's really an opportunity for the corporations who always, you know, had kind of the hesitance of supporting professional women's sports. But now they see <clears throat> now they see that the the upside of being in the forefront of that yeah, and not yeah. coming behind to say, OK, all right. First of all, these women are phenomenal off the court. Yeah. So you take basketball away and then you look at what the careers are and what they're doing, you know, off the court and how they can represent yeah. a brand. You know, it's sort of like having that, you know, the NIL now mm -hmm. and then now these these companies are really seeing the value in, you know, who makes the who makes the real decisions in the household, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you true. know. So that's that's and 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 I think that the league is is getting better um, marketing and obviously resources and budget that comes into play, you know, um, but viewership has skyrocketed, yes. has really been up double digits in the last three to four years consistently. So more people are watching, you know, the WNBA championship um, games. And like I said, it's coming from that collegiate. So getting those fans to really translate and follow their favorite players from college into the WNBA so that we can continue to pack the arenas uh, like, they, like they're doing in college and they're doing a great job. I also think the W, and when you talk about college, women's college basketball, I think those two specifically benefit so much from social media and that uh -huh. exposure oh, because it's it's un it's unpaid for. It's just like mm -hmm. instant heat, instant things that are happening. Every time Caitlin does something, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Every time like LSU going on that run last year, everybody was talking about LSU right. last year. South Carolina Coach Don, everybody's talking about them. So there, there's always consistent conversation. I, and I love the fact that social media is an opportunity and a platform that is utilized so well mm -hmm. in the women's game. And it, it brings exposure, right? Because okay. if you don't have viewership, everybody has a phone, right? <laughs> right. Everybody got social media. For the, I hate social media and I got it. So <laughs> everybody has it. And I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to continue to, to tell these stories, to build these legends up of these young women who are doing phenomenal feats, who are mm -hmm. averaging 40, 50 points a game and nobody's ever heard of them. You right. know, stuff like that is happening. Right. And the basketball is pure ball, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's offense and defense on both ends. It's, right. it's stuff that when I was coaching basketball, I used to tell my young men, that's what you need to watch. <laughs> like, don't watch LeBron. You're not 6'9". You're not dunking through the legs. You 5'2". You so... Let's pass the ball. Let's play some rotation offense. Let's play some zone defense. Let's move the ball in transition. And that happens in the W. That happens in the women's mm -hmm. game. So I'm happy that the light and exposure is there and that it's mm -hmm. going to continue to grow. Yeah, and the most intriguing thing about, you know, I hear when men talk about watching women's basketball, they bring up the fundamentals, mm -hmm. you know, of the game. 100%. Because you're going you're gonna to find that. You know, obviously we have women in the W and in college that can dunk, mm -hmm. but it's not, a, a consi it's not consistent in transition on a 
transition play, yeah. you know, you know, every every possession. But you do have exciting basketball, you know, from the fundamentals, from, you know, just the the orchestra, how they orchestrate the half court, you know, offense, um, also, the physicality of it. Too, yeah, the physicality like, of it and just, you know, how fast people don't understand um, how fast you know, the WNBA, the game yeah. is. And the athletes coming from college, you know, they get to experience that. So now you have, you know, entire roster of, you know, All-Americans. Yeah. As opposed to when you're in college, you may have one, two, or three All-Americans, but you're coming into a league that these women have are paving the way. Yes. And they are very protective uh, of the league. Um, you know, it's only pretty much, you got 144 players. Ooh. So these are 144 of the best women Ath, professional athletes that, that that you can have and and it's hard to make a roster. It's only a twelve man twelve man roster. Yeah, that's it, that's it. So you can get drafted and not make a team. I've seen that I've seen it recently, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's right. been a lot of that recently of like first round picks, top end picks who might be on a team for two years because right. it, people are really fighting for those spots. Mm -hmm. And the age range isn't like the NBA where it's like guys are jumping out at 30, 32. You have women who are in their 30s who are just hitting their just hitting their their prime, right. you know, because they're they're going overseas, they're honing mm -hmm. their skills, they're coming back here. Mm -hmm. I will say this about the W that I think is so funny for me as a coach is like I find myself couch coaching more <laughs> watching WNBA and women's basketball because it's like I know those plays. I know mm -hmm. how to, we were talking about um how Angel Reese. Angel Reese will like mm -hmm. front the post. It's like you don't see men do that stuff anymore on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. So it's like what we were used to playing growing up and what I'm used to coaching is happening mm -hmm. in this sport right here, right now. Mm -hmm. My anxiety goes up like every time <laughs> I watch a game because it's like, no, don't do that. Nope, don't swing it back. Nope, front of, I'm, I'm literally couch, couch coaching right. people. Like, it's that passion. You it's know these passion. people? You, you got money on the game? Like, that's really? how people look at me. Right. <laughs> me and Chris talk, I was like, honestly, I haven't been watching a lot of NBA basketball, yeah. to tell you the truth, because it's mm -hmm. just up and down, fast paced. There's nothing you could teach or learn from that. Mm -hmm. um, and it just blows my mind just how much exposure they're getting in, how great it is to see young ladies like an Angel Reese or a Caitlin Clark <laughs> get the credit they deserve mm -hmm. and just how high of um, a pedestal they've been put on in the game. And that's one thing that we started to implement in our camps and clinics is taking um, taking key possession from a game mm -hmm. or signature moves is what we call it oh, nice. and breaking that down so that they understand. So if you like, you see, um, you know, I'm going to speak of one of our uh, – from rookies, Zaya Cook. Mm -hmm. So you take a play that Zaya Cook did in the game, you break that down at the clinic, and now they're like, wow, you know, I can oh, do I the same that. thing that Zaya's doing. And that helped that help really validates the importance of drills. Because a lot of kids, they want to just roll the ball out and mm -hmm. they just want to scrimmage. Play. Let's play. You know, mm -hmm. no rhyme or reason. So you really have to explain to them why it's important to do drills and because that increases your basketball IQ. And I tell people all the time, you can take, you can have a bunch of talented players, but I guarantee you the team that has the best, the better I, uh, basketball IQ mm -hmm. will, win the game. will win the game. Fundamentals yeah. and basketball IQ, give me those youth, and I promise you we will beat you every time. I love that. I love that confidence. And I think that's that's one of the things when you talk about, like, the difference, especially we, we have a whole cohort at CHS about coaching girls. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that always comes up is boys compete to connect, girls connect to compete, mm -hmm. and getting young women to understand how to compete how to do it healthy, I think is very imperative and very important, but also just learning and breaking down plays, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's something that we don't really talk about when we talk about women's sports is like film study and mm -hmm. drill repetition and things like that. But that is really the bulk of how you get better and how Absolutely. you step up. It's not like guys were like, you go into the summer, you were 6'2", you come back to school in the fall, you 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, it's right. like, dude, you're you a star <laughs> athlete now. Mm -hmm. You have to continue to rep. You have to continue right. to, to play and, you know, I'm going to speak on reps to, to one of our teammates, Claire Perry. She always plays this game with us. Um, it's called two bounce. We lose and all the time. We lose every... I have not beaten Claire in two bounce. I've known her for 11 years. I haven't even gotten close. So, wow, and okay. It, it's because she's literally one of the best shooters I've ever seen. It's, it's all mm -hmm. her reps, her reps, her reps. Mm -hmm. And she had reps in high school. She's, she was a great college shooter. And even now as a mom, like she's still schooling her son with her shot. So I love the fact that that is really a part of it. But also right. it is a mainstay in mm -hmm. the sport. And not something that is like... 
you can do it if you want, or you can get better this way. Right. You know, like, boys just want to roll the ball out and play. Mm -hmm. The taller, faster, stronger guys are going to stay on the court, not the high IQ guys. Like, mm -hmm. you might have one or two who stick. So it's really great to hear that. So um, with all that you do with the Sparks and, you know, your illustrious career, you also do stuff in your hometown. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing outside of just what you do with the Sparks? So I'm ble very blessed that my personal and professional life intersects mm -hmm. um, because of my passion for youth and because of my passion for teaching and motivating. So back in 2017, um, started a nonprofit called the Attention Foundation, and it's A10TION. Um, and I mentioned earlier my num basketball number in college was number 10. Mm -hmm. And pretty much this derived from just getting with a bunch of my friends and people that I trust to share kind of my vision for a few things. And it, it came out of that, we call it like a mini retreat. Mm. And basically like, how can I get the attention of youth and share with them about my journey? And it just clicked, you know, the name. Um, but I'm, I have, I was able to acquire um, the middle school gym that I actually played in, I own now. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. So uh, it's a sport and educational facility. Um, so we really focus on the student athletes and families. Um, Fort Valley is a very, very, very small town, um, less than 10,000 people. Um, but we want to make sure that these kids have the opportunities um, to see that they can be whomever they want to be. So we focus on workforce and career development, mm. um, financial literacy. Uh, we have the, the mental health, which will be having a, uh, a great workshop that's coming up this year okay. on there. Um, all indoor sports um, that you could think of because it's all, all we could do all indoor sports from volleyball to wrestling to obviously basketball. Um, I just got a call about and want to be want to come to the do a pickleball tournament. Okay, and I yeah, think I'm gonna get into the pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. Yeah. pickleball seems like it's very interesting. It's easy to pick up, but, it's some people, right. but that's amazing uh -huh. to hear yeah. one that you own your middle school gym like that's legendary yeah, yeah. That's, we that's, could have stopped right there yeah. like, that could have been crazy. Man, when I tell you it took a lot of uh, a lot of renovation so the first <laughs> couple of years it was basically just uh, capital fundraising to raise money to to bring it to upgrade it mm -hmm. so cause how I left it is how I found it so it's like I walked in I was like okay so we just ripping up the floor and ripping up I mean just just what it looks like now is is just night and day and and it's interesting when I cause I'm back in Georgia at least once or twice a month yeah um and when people walk in I always like to capture their first reaction awesome. because they first they look behind them like did I walk into the same mm -hmm. building that used, <laughs> this used to be but it's just an opportunity we have um, uh, we have arts as well so everything all the programming is about STEAM mm. um, so we Amazing. have an art to heart yeah. program then also our next uh, project that we're working on now is uh, eSports and providing a coding lab so we have a gaming room so I have the space so now now we're just e -sports connect for okay you yeah we, we could chat about so that. we're yeah. so we're working so we're working on that now and so I have three courts um, have men and women's locker room um, so enough space and it's on a beautiful campus of um, actually the campus of uh, the church purchase like the all of the other parts the auditorium mm -hmm. and those things they have a cafe they're going to have a daycare there but they had no plans for the gym Wow. Well, no it, plans for the gym yet and here comes Natalie White mm -hmm. and Hometown it's like, hero. hey, go, go, go for it. And it's, it's been amazing. It's been a lot of work. Yeah. But it's been worth it. It's that's been amazing. Worth it. That's amazing. For those young ladies out there looking to find a mentor in the space, because that's a big part of making it to that next level, mm -hmm. finding a person who you can, like, kind of embody what they do well, mm -hmm. what are the things that they should be looking for in those folks? They should be looking for someone that is two types of people. So the mentor, someone that you're going to share kind of your dreams and goals and aspirations of what you want to do, someone to help guide you. And then you have your sponsors. Um, these are the people who are actually going to, you know, help you get a seat at that table. You know, that's going to speak about you on your behalf that. when you're not around. Yep. So it's two, it's, it's, it's a difference. You got to differentiate between the two because that mentor is just going to guide you and just going to provide that advice that you need. But that sponsor is going to like, okay, it's go time. This is the seat. You want to be at this table? This is how you get there. 
you have that seat at the table. And then also, too, just, just teaching that, that the, the beauty of networking mm -hmm. and, and building that confidence. Because I think that's one thing that our youth lack is confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, everything they want quick, fast, yeah, 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 and yeah. hurry. Perfect. It doesn't happen too. like that. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> that building real. that confidence. Because I, now. Right. Because I know what confidence did for me. So right now, I know my worth. I know my worth. And, and I will use my voice. And I've been blessed to do everything that I wanted to do. Everything I wanted to do since I graduated college. Now, this is a coaching podcast. Okay. So can't let you go uh, without asking you, throughout your illustrious career, um, who was your favorite coach and what impact did they have on you? <laughs> you know, I would say, I would say the, the and, and, and I was, com I mean, tremendously blessed because I had a coach within my family. Oh. I have a very athletic family background. So I don't think I even had a choice to play <laughs> sports or not. I think that that was just already like, what? What are you thinking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. We signed um, you up. So <laughs> my, my aunt, Matt, Coach Maxine Cherry is retired now, who's actually one of my managers at the facility. Awesome. Um, she was my high school coach. Oh, okay. She was an outstanding player in college at HBCU Division II at Fort Valley State University, yep. right in our hometown. So I grew up, you know, watching her. And then the opportunity to play for her mm -hmm. and to really just, you had that family love, but then you had that tough love. Mm -hmm. Because if anybody has ever had to play for uh, you know, their mom or dad or aunt or family member, you know, it's tough because that ride home could be a little difficult. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you, <laughs> you lose a game, it could be a little difficult. But <laughs> but um, she was just a woman of integrity. Um, she did things the right way. Um, she, she didn't tear you down to build you up. She motivated you in a, in a different way because it came from the heart. It was genuine. Amazing. Yeah. I so, love that. Yeah, so I'm blessed to have her. So I really, so it made up for going down the line and coaches that didn't resonate as much, mm -hmm. but I had a great foundation. Awesome. That's and amazing. I credit That's everything to, to what she poured into me. That's amazing. So, Natalie, before we get out of here, mm -hmm. are there any calls of action that you want to share with the people that can help support the work you're doing in Los Angeles or in your hometown in Georgia? Yes, absolutely. So we have um, our season coming up. So lasparks.com um, and also on all social media is, is, LA, is LA Sparks. So if you guys can, can follow us. And then also um, Home Opener, May 15th. Okay. Home Opener, May 15th, okay. tipping off the 2024 season. So look forward to seeing everybody um, in our prospective arenas where we'll be playing this year. And is there any social media handles for your nonprofit or anything else that you want to share? So, yeah, so with Attention Foundation is Attention, A-1-0-T-I-O-N Foundation, um, on IG and then also on Facebook. So follow us. Check us out. See what's going on. We have a lot of events um, coming up. All of our events are, are free events for the community. And then we have our upcoming camps and clinics schedule that's coming up as well. Awesome. Awesome. Natalie, thank you. Thank you so for much for Thank you. Joining us today, um, I know we have a lot of work to do ahead of us, but just want to say thank you for stopping in and sharing your story with us and also sharing everything that you're doing, all the incredible work that you've been doing and what you're doing now. Um, I hope that it really resonates with some young people out there. Um, and with that, everybody, that is another episode of Coaching While Black. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we'll check you out next time. Peace. Peace.